Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Oh, my, my shirt is not fitting in with my other outfit. Let's see. Well, welcome, welcome. Today, we're doing our chat. Let's make a game. <laughs> oh, very glad that you're here. Let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library. There we, there we go, that's a little bit better. All right, teacher computer classes for the Columbia County Library. And this is gonna be a fun class. This is Scratch, let's make a game. If you've been in any of my other classes, uh, you'll see that one of the things we do is we try to keep it you know, positive and upbeat. And I hope that you're having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Um, little side note here, try to let you know that there are other classes coming up too. Definitely feel free to post any kind of comments into the chat. Uh, one of the things is you do have to be logged in to, um, <laughs> that's funny, my shirt. You do have to be logged into to YouTube to kind of post any comments on YouTube. And also you need to hit subscribe and like as well. So let's go ahead and let's talk about what we're going to cover today. One big thing is, like I said, you have to be logged in and have to make sure that you're logged into YouTube to be able to post any kind of comments or anything. And the big question I usually ask is, how can I help? Okay. Uh, this is going to be a fun class. I like this class. It's a lot of, it's, it's really fun. I don't want to say fun too many times. Uh, so Tuesday, which was yesterday, we did introduction to, to basic coding and animation class, AKA our Scratch One class, okay? Um, so that should still be available here on our YouTube channel. So if you want looking for our YouTube channel, just search on YouTube, GCHRL uh, videos, and that's our channel should pop right up. Earlier today, I did a gadget help uh, Q&A session, had questions about a uh, Samsung phone and using the camera and putting the memory card in, and also had some questions about doing some training so we got some online training on there and we also talked about some uh, uh, some classes online free classes we talked about the universal class so that video is still up if you want to kind of fast forward to, to some of that we talked about in the later half also we talked about some scratch alternatives too so if you have students if you have your kids and you're 
want to do something a little different than scratch and but still want to do some coding stuff got some links on there too and of course today we're doing our scratch with the goose now tomorrow we're going to be doing uh, Google search and internet safety basics okay the way this works is that we're doing classes individual classes for each library and I'll also post a link uh, in the Facebook and also if you want to subscribe to this YouTube channel um, and <coughs> excuse me to find all our classes uh, it'll be actually posted on YouTube um, but you can uh, follow the individual libraries and the links as well so they'll promote their classes and then tomorrow afternoon we're going to be doing Raspberry computing and project ideas which we'll find out listen oh. wonder what's in this box oh, we'll be doing a uh, opening box Got a new Raspberry Pi, maybe four that came in the mail. Oh, so we'll get to open and see what's inside our box here. Also, we'll get to see what's inside our, our box full of goodies. So we've got wires in here. We've got motors in here. we got all kinds of neat projects that we can do with our Raspberry Pi. Our breadboard's in here, too. Listen to it. So that'll be for tomorrow okay here's a list of our other classes that we have uh, have had uh, like I said most of these are actually on the Facebook pages for the libraries but those videos are still up and available and tomorrow we'll be posting what we'll be doing next month okay in August can't believe it's August already just a little side note here uh, I know the libraries are actually open with limited services and hours curbside holds pickup is available yay so thank the librarians for do that it's a great uh, service that they're doing for us to be able to use and also don't forget that you can go to gchrl.org for more details of course you can call the library Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. <laughs> to 5 p.m. okay with your questions Please don't forget to like our Facebook pages so you'll get updates. And also don't forget to like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Okay, so let's get back here. Let's make a game. So welcome, welcome. Glad that you're here. Um, next month uh, in August, I'm actually going to be doing a new class. I've actually gotten certified. So we'll be doing a class known as scratch to python so come join me for that it's gonna be a great one so you love scratch as much as i do scratch is a lot of fun lots of great things you can do with it and uh, we're also going to be learning a little bit about the other coding language python got a great website that makes python into basically scratch like blocks and we'll be doing that doing some stuff like rock paper scissors game and then covering a bunch of the topics there okay so let's go ahead and get started and I'm also going to and put the handout in the um, so give me a second I gotta put the handout in our chat there don't forget to to um, you know ask if you have any questions or anything you do have to be logged into YouTube to comment and of course subscribe to our page as well so come on in and say hello and I'm gonna pull up the handout and I'll post it Mm -hmm. oh, I may already have it in there. Let's see. I'll post it into the to the um, the chat there. So give me one second. Mm -hmm. Big question is: Have you made? Uh, a scratch game before mm. all right so here's our handout And I'm also going to make it as big as I can. 
on the screen over here on the right side. So basically with this we're going to uh, pull it up here on the right side and then we'll I'll be on well, the right side. We'll be pulling up here and then one of the things we'll do is we'll cover a lot of the topic and then we'll actually we'll do the hands-on part. I do recommend you having a uh, scratch uh, uh, account so you can save your project but realize you don't have to have that okay nothing today is going to make you um, have to sign up or whatever but it is a free account and you can save your projects and stuff okay all right so let's talk about what we're going to cover okay we're, today we're going to uh, learn about what scratch is a little bit I've got a quick little video I'll play too we'll talk about signing up and logging in again you don't have to have a sign up or log in. We're also going to be talking about um, starting Scratch and some of the basics of using Scratch. Um, but mostly, I recommend the animation class. If you want, if we're missing a little few details there, mostly we're going to try to jump into going and coding our games and stuff. And of course, I'm a big believer in project-based learning. So we're also going to learn about using our project our first project is going to be Ghostbusters okay a little Ghostbusters click game and then we're going to be doing a ball bounce game kind of like a pong game okay and then we'll work on the boat ra race game I also have extra uh, handout it's a dodgeball kind of game it's kind of like the original Donkey Kong arcade game but we've had it in class but it takes a little long so I've still included it in the handout so that you can follow along and do it at home and then we'll we can talk about explore resources and see if there's any questions or anything like that okay are you ready to get started <laughs> I think I hear you <laughs> you are okay that's great <laughs> all right so Let's talk about what we can do with Scratch just pretty briefly. Uh, so Scratch is a programming language. It's online. The best part about it is it basically uses blocks to be able to create. Okay, uh, you do not have to have a license. It's free to use. It's by created by MIT. Uh, the really cool thing is if you do actually create something, you could technically sell it if you wanted to for free. It does allow that because it is an open source. A language now don't forget uh, next week we're going to be doing and I'll I have the schedule ready for tomorrow uh, about whole next month and we'll also be doing scratch to Python class so be ready for that I have a little quick overview of what scratch is and I'll play that video real quick Kind of give you some ideas of kind of the fun things that we can do with Scratch. Okay, just a little overview video talking about the different things we can do with Scratch. So let's go ahead and let's go to scratch.mit.edu. If you don't have an account, you can sign up. It is a free account. But like I said, everything we do today, you won't have to have an account. And let, but I do recommend it because you may want to save your uh, projects. Okay. 
you can mess with them later okay all right so uh, click the join if you want to join sign up and let's go ahead and we're going to click the create button which will start our project if you are logged in the way you save your files is you click where it says untitled give it a name hit file hit save now and then your project has been saved alright so here's our scratch page let's go ahead and click create up here I am logged in And now we're at our main screen. Of course, now I have that song in my head. <laughs> Little brief over program overview here. So number one here is our stage. Okay, that's where our our animation is. That's where we see our characters. Number two is our backdrop. You may actually hear me say background, okay, because some programs call it backgrounds. Here's our sprites, number three. It's where we see our little character sprites. We have our work area, okay. That's this area here, number four, where we see our code, okay. Big thing to remember is each individual sprite and the backdrop can have its own code area. So when we click on the sprite, the area where our code is will load. We also have our blocks on the left side. Here's our blocks. Uh, we do have our different categories that are broken up here, but if you're not sure where something is, just grab the scroll, and the good part is you can keep scrolling up and down, and it'll go through all the different categories, so if you're looking for something. Talk about using our blocks. One big thing is that uh, the reason it's blocks are really great is that they can be uh, the the p the blocks the code that goes together means the blocks go together okay so if something's wrong with the code it actually gets fixed because the code that doesn't go together will not fit in our little blocks here one thing is we'll have certain areas where we can actually click like where it says 15 we can click there and make a change today we'll also talk about using our variables and we can actually drag variables into some of these little areas we also have drop down areas as well and also we have things like the repeat looks kind of like Pac-Man this is where we put our other code in it that fits in there and the repeat will keep going or we have our wait seconds or so again here's our boxes here this is where we put text and we'll also be dealing with uh, one today that has the hex uh, shape in there uh, mostly so more than one thing can happen okay different types of blocks we have and let's go ahead and get started and let's work on our Ghostbusters game okay so last yesterday was it last week <laughs> but uh, yesterday we talked about using we did our animation we did a dance uh, game as well we also did our birthday card when we did our birthday card we started using one called when clicked on okay to make things happen okay so that was a really big one for us and this one that's how we're going to uh, change our game so let's talk about what we're going to learn we're going to understand the need for pauses between actions with loops okay we're going to use our code to generate random numbers in scratch we're also going to add a score okay we're also going to add a timer as well we're going to add a variable to the store uh, to store a game score in scratch okay so we're gonna make it an official game not just clicking in an animation and a game you usually have to have some type of score now don't we or you can't say that you're the best I'm the best because I have the highest score uh, the address for this project is actually right here the full address So if you wanted to go there, this is one of the Raspberry Pi projects, and I'm going to augment it a little bit so that it will have an actual ending. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's talk about Ghostbusters. Big thing is this is going to be our, our background. 
our drop and my biggest goal to begin with is we're going to make our our ghost pop up uh, to begin with and set it up so that he'll keep appearing 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 show hide and a random number okay so let's go ahead and let's flip back here first thing is we need to click the cat and delete it okay whoop hold on didn't have the thing open all right so we need to click on our cat and let's go to the trash bin that's there and click that to get rid of it now let's go ahead and let's go to our cat here where it says choose sprite always remember that you can upload your own graphics on here okay there are, of course the pre-made ones you can upload your own you can also draw your own as well but if we click here again it'll give us the pre-made ones now uh, how do you know which one is an animation if you hover over the area right, there's mr. bear if you hover over the area then it actually will animate if it has an animation now in this program they call it costumes if you're using another program they call it frames okay so I'm gonna go down and we're choosing the one I'm gonna go with my handout choose the one that says ghost now uh, just like I just said one of the things that first thing to do if you're gonna make uh, cook something follow the recipe and then next time you make it make changes to it and then make it your own okay so I first recommend our handout we just kind of follow the handout, but uh, you'll be able to still be able to add some of your own random uh, things too. All right, so there's Ghost. If I hover over Ghost, he's got some funny little animations. So let's click him. Boom, there's our ghost. Ooh, it's spooky already. He looks kind of like a gelatin ghost, doesn't he? Like he's made out of jello or something. All right, so let's choose our backdrop and let's click Woods. So if we go down here and we go here and again you can upload your own graphics you can draw your own but let's click here again where it says choose a backdrop you might hear me say background and we're going to the woods the one that says woods so it's there the very very bottom hopefully you're getting some good ideas about different games projects you can work on animation stories let's do woods oh it's spooky already isn't it oh spooky all right so let's make a code so it looks like the ghost is appearing and reappearing so the first thing we need to add is our when the flag is clicked So let's go to events. Now remember, if you can't find something or not sure which category something is in, you can just kind of scroll up and scroll down because it shows all of it. So let's go when the flag is clicked and let's drag that over here. Okay. When the flag is clicked, we actually want to add, I believe it's a forever one. It is, it is a forever. So we want control and it's where it says forever and it looks kind of like a Pac-Man we want to put it in there now one of the things that we have going here and we can actually play with this to begin with we actually want him to appear and reappear appear then reappear that's kind of our goal so we're gonna add a hide wait a second show and then wait a second okay Now again, this is us learning how to do programming because we're, we're learning about, we have to tell it how to do things in individual steps, don't we? All right, so I'm gonna do hide first. You could change the order if you wanted to. It's purple, it's under looks, hide, and show is here. I might put that in there already. Now, if we actually did hit the green flag, it actually will look like nothing happened because it's doing it so quickly okay I have to hit the stop sign it'll look like it's doing it so quickly that we can't see anything so we do have to add a pause and where's my pause there it is it's under control 
So wait one second, I'm gonna drag it and put it in between the hide and the show. And some, one thing that's important when anytime dealing with loops is you have to realize that it's gonna go to show and then hide and I have to put another weight in there for the end for, for when it starts over. Okay, now let's look at it. So when we hit the green flag, it's gonna keep doing this forever until we tell it to stop. Remember you can make it do it a certain amount of times, but for this game we want it to keep doing it until we stop or our time runs out. It's gonna do forever, it's gonna hide the ghost, it's gonna wait a second, show the ghost, and then wait a second so we'll see the ghost for a second, and then it's gonna go back to hide. So it's gonna look like he blinks on for a second and is off for a second, okay? So let's try our, our flag. On, off, on, off, on, off, okay? Did you get it? Hello, Marie, welcome, welcome. All right, we've already got animation going on. Okay, so let's go to our next part. Now let's make it random, okay? So we actually are going to be using, uh, and we'll, next week when we talk about uh, Randent, okay? <laughs> uh, it's actually going to be the, the point of it being random in different places. So how do we make it random? Well, the big thing is that we actually have a block called go to random position on the screen, okay? So we want to put the go to the random Go to random part on the screen and then show, okay? And then it's gonna look like he's moving around. So our looks, I think it's under looks. And if we look here, okay, hold on. See if I can find it, where is it on here? Go to random position. Okay, I gotta find it. Okay, it's under blue. So go to random position. Now, you can tell it specifically where you want something to go, but right now we just want it to tell us randomly, okay? So we're gonna put that right before show. So on. It's gonna make sure the ghost is hidden. Wait a second, go to random position, and then show up so it's gonna look like he's just kind of jumping around everywhere, okay? Oh, I don't know where he's gonna be next. Where's he going? Ooh. Aha. Okay, and then I can move them anywhere I want to start with. Okay, so, did you get it? How's he jumping around randomly? All right, now, let's go down and let's actually add more randomness, okay? Now, here's the trick. We're actually gonna be adding uh, something that's gonna change, okay? So this is actually all by itself we're going to get the weight right now it says wait one second and we're going to put this in there instead okay so pick random okay and we're going to make it one to ten seconds so let's go get that under operators pick random one to ten do you see that All right, so let's drag this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it and we're gonna hover over where the number one is, the bubble, and it's gonna put it in there, okay? So now, 
it's going to hide, wait one to ten seconds, go to a random position, it's going to show itself for a second, and then it's going to come back. So it's going to, we don't know when the ghost is going to show up, between one and ten seconds, and I might actually change that to five seconds just so that we're not, with our little example here, we're not taking up uh, too much time. So one to five seconds, okay. All right, so hit go. Where is he coming? He's coming for, ah! When is he coming, when is he coming for us? We don't know when he's coming, he's gonna come get us. Ah! Uh, we, oh, that was sooner than I expected. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> So if you actually have that on 10, see what that's like. There. <laughs> so <laughs> once you see, we can make changes to it. And then it's going to come up and, oh, and then randomly pop up uh, 1 to 10 seconds. Okay. So did you get it? <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm going to hit stop when he shows up so we can see him. Let's go back to our handout here. And then I'm going to just kind of play around with it uh, a little bit. Uh, so we're going to make it a little bit more random. Okay, not well, we're going to make it random size. Okay, so we have these blocks that says set size. And our best bet is, uh, let's see, 20 to 20, 200%. So basically, we're going to make him smaller or bigger. Now, the thing that's going to happen is the illusion will actually look like that he's gone further away or closer, okay? Even though all we're doing is changing his size, okay? So let's go ahead and get our set size, which is under looks. So, wait, let me make sure. Set size, yeah. So, set size. And we want to put it in probably here just before he shows. So, right about in this position because he's hidden. It makes all these changes and then it shows what it is. So, 100% is what he is right now. Um, if you go down here to size, you can see what 100% is. And you can see less than that, it'll be less than 100%, and he'll be smaller than he normally is. And of course, a higher number makes him bigger as well. And what we want to choose is, we want to get the pick random again. Which is under operators, pick random. Let's drag it over that bubble. And the best thing to do is, I think, 20 and then 200, okay? All right, so try that and see what that's like. So now we have to wait 10 seconds. He's gonna be in a random position, 20 to 200. Ah! <laughs> So the interesting part about the size is that it'll look like he's further away and then it looks like he's getting close, you know, getting closer and closer. We don't know where he's going to randomly show up. We don't know the time frame he's going to show up, okay? And we also and it's because the 200% will actually make him look like he's gotten closer to us, okay? So he really is jumping around. There you go. If he's smaller down here, it kind of blows the illusion, but when he's like back there and he's smaller, it makes him look like he's further away. And then we should get one where he's closer. Uh, still far away, still far. Ah! <laughs> oh, it's pretty funny. All right, so let's hit stop. Okay, so some other things that I actually know, and I, when we actually do our game here, 
I may go back and mess with our animations too. But did you get that? Okay, so now let's move on to our next part where we're going to make it actually into a game. Okay. So let's talk about coding uh, the catching ghosts. Okay, now that we're going to add code to your game so the player uh, can catch the ghosts, the player should be able to click the ghosts to catch them. Okay, so this is important here. So we're going to make when the sprite is clicked, hide. Now we have it set to a second. Where's my when this sprite is clicked? Okay, has its own hat, so it's a separate section. Okay, now let me zoom in here so that's a little bit bigger, and I'll try to make it a little bigger. Don't want it to be too small on y'all's screen. Okay, uh, we won't get into uh, let's see the next game we will, um, but this is also how you can control stuff here with the keyboard okay if you want to alright so we want it to do looks and we want it to do hide okay so let's drag that over so when we click the ghost it's gonna hide okay and then the only time it's gonna come back is when the show here shows up so let's now let's try it. oh click the ghost now remember it's going to disappear after a second anyway. But our game, we, we have to click it less than a second. So they get points, okay? So that's why we want it to hide. Okay, we actually want to show a reaction when we do something. All right, so let's add our sound. Okay, now our sound actually comes with our little ghost. It's like a boing, 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 boing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This one, the ghost doesn't come with it. I'm sorry. I don't think, does he have a sound? Yeah, his sound is like an alien, even though he's a ghost for some reason. So let's go ahead and let's add a sound. Let's go up here and let's click sounds. Okay, and let's go down here and let's choose a sound. Again, you can upload. A big question I get asked is kind of upload WAV files and MP3 files. Yes, you can. There you go, right there. So click this here, and we're looking for a boing. Uh, these are really neat because it means that you can do things like you can actually make uh, musical instruments because it has the different uh, scales. So boing, that's what we want is boing. Boing, 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 boing. So choose boing, boing, boing. Okay, so let's go back to our code. Realize this is our code tab, our costumes tab, sounds tab. Let's click code. All right, now uh, we want to add. Uh, now let me go remember what we we're doing. <laughs> we want to add it so when he gets clicked on, he plays the boing sound. Okay, so when this sprite is clicked, let's add boing. Boing, until done, hide, okay? So we go to sounds, play sound, and if you click the drop down, it'll show the two we have, which is this, the alien one and boing. How do I add more to here? Again, you click sounds, you click here to add more, and it'll show up, okay? I'm going to drag that to be in between hide. All right, so here we go. So if I do, so here we go. So here's a big one. If I click the ghost, it's going to make a boing sound. If I miss clicking the ghost, I won't get anything. But after a second, the ghost will disappear. Boing. Boing. Did 
you get it? Did you get it to work? Any questions? Okay. Now, let's talk about the part that um, if you're newer to Scratch, you've never made a game in Scratch, it may be, well, how do I even get started doing a score or setting up a timer? So that's what we're about to do. Okay, so let's talk about our timer, okay? It may look sound a little more complicated, but it's really not, I promise. Uh, the big thing about this is we actually do have to create something from nothing which means we have to create a variable, okay? The variable where it says, so it says words like score or timer, those are words that we typed in, so it can be called anything, but don't let that throw you, okay? Once you get this, you'll be able to remember it and also be able to um, re, you know, recreate it yourself as well for your projects. Okay, now we're gonna make game more interesting by keeping score, we're gonna create a variable called score okay so we're going to click on variables in the code tab we're going to click make a variable we're going to type in the name score best to make a capital s because this is what will be on the screen okay now copy it players should uh, score points when they click on the ghost to catch them each time a player clicks on a ghost their score should increase okay so let's go ahead and let's make a variable so if I go down here to where it says variables all I get is a little bit of a simple a simple settings here okay so let's go and click make a variable so variables make a variable Okay, give it a name, and it will say, now this is actually what's going to show up on the screen, okay? We can hide the score if we want to, we can hide the timer if we wanted to, uh, but we actually want it to be visible right now, okay? Now, uh, the thing about this is, uh, we give it a score we want to say for all sprites, okay? Not just this one, because we're actually going to go to the, the backdrop. So let's click OK, and then you should have something new that says score, all right? And then on the screen, you should have where it says score because that's what we typed in, okay? So let's minimize this and let's keep going. Did you get it? Okay, it's different if you've never done this before. And it kind of feels like you're pulling out, out of a hat we kind of are because we just are learning, getting a little bit more advanced with Scratch and just doing some animation and stuff, making the cat talk, kick a ball. Of course, you can do all that stuff because we want it to interact, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and let's click the backdrop. We want to add the code, click the flag, and we're going to drag from variables, set score to, okay? We need the score to set as zero. Now, uh, just like I talked about in the other class, anytime we do something, we need to undo it as well. So let's click our backdrop. Realize that you can click the sprite and there's their code and it shows a little preview right here. And when I click the backdrop, here's the code and um, it shows a little preview there as well. So I want to set my variable, drag that over there and we need to have it so it's this starts when we click the green okay set my variable no we want to set score okay set score because it has a name to zero okay the reason we're doing this is so the game will start over when we hit the green and we're also going to add um, one that will actually stop everything later okay so when the timer runs out, we're going to have it so it completely stops. Okay, click the ghost, okay, and then we're going to add, when the sprite, we're going to add a new one, when the sprite is clicked, hide, well, we can actually add, add that to after hide, okay, hide, and then change score by one point, okay. So let's click our ghost, 
and our variable that says when this sprite is clicked play sound boing and hide and we're actually going to add change blank by okay got to make sure it says score change score by one okay did you get it now if you don't make the variable the score will not be there so just realize that and we're also going to make a timer here in a second so you can't just use my variable all right all right so let's hit green Whoop. I missed it Now him being random like that could actually make it difficult Oing. when we set our timer to win whoop, missed him to win a game because we don't know when he's going to show up. So if the random all of a sudden decide to make him show up every second, Oing. then we could make a higher score. All right, so we made it to 10. All right, so hit stop. Now when we hit the flag, because we made it on our backdrop, the score when the flag is clicked, set score to zero, that means it'll reset the score back to zero, okay? Remember, it's that part where we give one thing, we have to undo it, okay? Now, to give our ghost a little bit of variety, and I'm gonna do this before we go ahead and add the timer, to give our ghost a little bit of variety, Let's go ahead and let's click costumes. All right. So we look at our ghost here cuz I don't think we make we make sure here. Yeah, that's what I thought. We don't we don't do that. Okay. So we want to give him a little bit of variety. So when we click costumes, we can see he's here, he's there. He's like ooh and then he's like over here. Okay? Now we could specifically make him do something, and I'm actually going to be silly here. I'm going to give him a mustache. So I'm going to click here and make it black. And where's his little nose? His nose is here. So look. <laughs> it's got a little bit more like angry eyes, isn't it? I have angry eyes. Oh. Okay, so we can draw on our characters. We can also see the different um, the different costumes. Now, uh, in our other animation, we actually use something that we told it specifically which uh, costume we want it to do. But in this one, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to looks, and I'm actually gonna do choose uh, next costume, okay? So I'm actually gonna drag and put it right here okay so this means every time he shows up he's going to be in a different costume okay or different uh, a frame as if this was an animation program so let's try that so if I hit green this should reset as well and it did Ooh. Oh. Ready, ready, where'd he go? Where's he gonna go? Where is he? Whoop, I missed. Oh, 
angry eyes or angry mustache. Oink. Oink. All right, so we made it to 10. Okay, now let's go ahead. Let's talk about adding a timer and we'll basically have finished up our uh, ghost game, okay? So timers are a little bit more complicated as you can see. <laughs> so it's like, and we're gonna do all that? Ah, good question. You know, the timer right now uh, will actually only restart when we hit the, the green flag, okay? So that's a good question. Timer's only going to restart when we actually hit the green flag, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead. Well, first, we've got to create a variable called time, okay? Let's go to our variables, and I'm actually going to give it a capital T because it will show up, this is what's gonna show up on the screen. And look, there's time. I could move it over here if I want to, and I think I will, just so it's kinda like, like that. Okay. Is it time or timer? Eh. You could call it timer, it depends. Okay, your timer should start at 10 seconds, okay. Count down every second. Now, the thing we had set up a minute ago was when I clicked, it made the, the score go up, okay? Now, based on time, I'm gonna make the score go down, okay? That's what this is gonna do, okay? So we actually wanted to set the, the game uh, to begin with. We're gonna add on, we're gonna have to click the background so let's go to our background. We have this created already. When click, set the score to zero. Now we're gonna say, set the variable. We click the variable. We're gonna set it to time to 10. So we're gonna make it 10 seconds, okay? So our score, and when we hit the flag, it's gonna reset our score to zero, okay? And realize that uh, I do have, we're going to move on, of course, to our next game, but the cool part about this is that you can actually add as many sprites as you want, then trying to appear so it's not just one of them, and you can also set it up. So maybe there's one that you're going to keep small in the background, and maybe it gets uh, two points or something, and then it's, a, then it's a more interesting game already, okay? Okay, so let's go to our, our section here. So we first we need to repeat. Okay, why do we need to repeat? Well, we need to make sure that it's sitting there and waiting, okay? We want it to repeat 10 times. That means it's gonna count down from 10, okay? Now, the important part here is, well, let, let's do this part and we'll talk about that. So let's do our repeat. So here's our repeat 10. And because it's 10 seconds, so we want it to count down 10. That's right, we have to make it repeat 10 times. So we're gonna make it wait a second, okay? Again, this is kind of that sleight of hand where we have going on the things are really not interacting with each other. It's just us making it look like they're interacting together, okay? We're gonna do change time by minus one. Okay. Okay, let's see. How for some reason we can't find the code on our sprite after the costume. Okay, so let me look and see here. So if you click the sprite, do you realize you can zoom in and zoom out here? Maybe click the zoom out. The only real way to delete is basically right clicking and then clicking clicking delete to delete any of the code so it should still be there try to zoom out and see what happens okay 
because the code can get kind of long, it, it can get a little frustrating because look, I can zoom in too much and then all of a sudden my code, you know, basically is gone. Or if you're talking about switching back to the code, make sure you click up here. You can see. So the code will disappear if you click costumes and to go back you click code up here, one of the tabs. Did that help? Did you get it? Okay, I'm trying to have it so it's on the screen, but try to make it as big as possible. But it kind of cuts it off a little bit when I do. All right, did that help? All right, so let's go to the, let me know, and if not, we'll work on it, okay? Okay, so we got our timer here. Now we have to add time, change. Make sure to switch it from variable to time by minus one second, okay? Okay, so let's go to the stage or background, drag drop, I should say. And then let's go to variables. And we want this one that says set my variable to zero. Or excuse me, change. Change my variable by one, okay? So let's drag that out here. Now let's make that unto time. And we're gonna do a minus, minus one, okay? Now, what that's gonna do is, kinda of think about it in your head, it's gonna do it 10 times. So after every second, it's going to subtract one from the timer, okay? Because we set the timer to start at 10. So let's see it count down. The score should reset to zero, and there's our timer counting down. And if we do click on one of our ghosts, Boing. now the problem right now is guess what? Come on, there it is. Boing. The timer stops. And the game doesn't stop. <laughs> the game doesn't stop. Okay. Boing. So the game is still going on here. So until I hit stop. Okay. So what we need to do is we'll add our next code, which is it's an if then. Okay. This is in, it's in the repeat section and it's going to look like a Pac Man. If then. Okay. So. Let's get our code. Let's go to control and you'll see the wait, repeat, forever. And you'll see if, then. And it looks like there's kind of like a, a octagon here. So let's drag that on out here. And it's not going in the repeat. We want it to be a new thing, the next one, okay? All right, so if something, then. So let's go back. So the big thing is we actually want when time equals zero, if time ever equals zero, we want it to complete, the game can completely stop, okay? We want everything to stop. So this will actually take care if we actually add more ghosts or more characters to it, okay? So how do we do that? Well, first we need to find the block that's green that has an equal, okay? So let's go to operators, and it looks like a hexagon, like a stretched out one. We have plus, so we have to go, is there operators, excuse me. There's a plus one, there's a minus, there's a multiply, divide, there's our pick random, greater than, less than, and equal. So let's drag this out here, and we have to hover right over the kind of stretched out hexagon, let go, and then it puts it in there. Now, we actually want it to be time, so let's go to variables, 
and we're actually going to drag the time bubble drag the time bubble and put it in there boom now it says time now our time is never going to reach 50 when our time reaches zero we're going to want everything to stop so let's go in there and change it to zero okay now we want to stop all don't we okay and where is that I think it's under control scroll down here there it is right here stop all okay now if I drag that this means that when our timer counts down to zero it's going to stop the entire game and the ghost will stop too and any other animations or anything like that that you have going on will stop as well okay so once you add that we basically have a completed game you can add more characters to it I probably would recommend a um, uh, like another character at least two more maybe even one that's very small that maybe is worth two points or maybe even if it's really small maybe it's worth like five points or something <laughs> and it really makes anytime you add a little bit of extra there it really makes your uh, um, characters and clicking interesting okay uh, maybe you could put a, a human in there running around and if you accidentally click the human and not the ghost or whatever uh, then it takes points off from you so I could, I've played games that were like that it's like ooh, click these things but don't click this so let's go ahead and let's click the flag oh, here comes our timer oh. <laughs> I got that extra one in didn't I the last second but our game completely stopped because we have a stop all set up here okay now you also could set it up that when you reach a certain number the game stops as well uh, but the timer is mainly when we want our game to stop so because we do have something that's random uh, one to ten seconds it could make it very difficult but this is still kind of our game concept here Oink. all right see if I can get more than two nope all right start again Okay, to make it faster, I would probably go back here and change him from 10 seconds to 5, just so that I have a little bit of chance. Oink. Oink. Ah, I got two. Let me see if I can get three. Oink. So three is my high score. High score is three, okay? So try to beat that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to call this the ghost game, and I'm going to save it. That does need H in there. All right, and then file save. There we go. All right, so now let's go up and let's start a new. Let's do file and new, okay? All right, so let's do minimize this and let's keep going. Let's do our ball bounce, okay? Now, this is one where, and part of it is due to time, uh, you could actually make these blocks a lot smaller, but just because of time and, and the coding here, we're actually going to just make uh, three blocks and then be kind of large right now, okay? But basically it's our ball bounce and then we're going to be down here the red is bad the game will well the ball will, will um, uh, stop when it hits the red but our green is what our mouse is actually going to control uh, going back and forth okay so first let's go ahead and let's add the background stage okay looks like this is called neon 
and then we're going to add our sprite called the ball and we of course have to delete uh, our sprite that's the cat because our cat is not involved in this game so let's go ahead and let's click here the backdrop and I believe it's called neon there it is neon tunnel okay and then our sprite is just called ball it's right there okay now one of the things is we need the ball to bounce around don't we okay so on the ball we want to do green click point direction 120 okay all right so in the green flat make sure you're on the ball when the green flag is clicked then we want point and direction 120 uh, the reason we're doing that is just because um, let's see if I can explain a little better just so that it's if you tell it to, to do up or down then it won't ever have like an angle bounce so this is so we start the ball off with an angle bounce so it's bouncing at an angle and it is let's see what is what's it called it's the uh, point in direction sorry looks no it's a motion point point in direction okay and I actually want to set it to 120 okay just so that it starts at an angle and it'll starts off it bouncing at different angles okay okay now we want to make sure that the ball is moving now don't we let's go ahead and add a forever the forever and then our next one is move 10 steps so move 10 steps this is the way we we actually get the ball to look like it's animated and if on edge bounce or the ball would just go off the screen <laughs> it will not come back so if on edge bounce it's under motion there it is if on edge bounce okay so we got the green flag pointed direction 120 a forever move 10 steps if on edge bounce and there we go now hit the green flag and the ball should bounce around boing boing there we go and because we started it at a certain angle it will keep um, going at a certain angle which is what we want if you don't do that it'll just kind of go up and down up and down or left and right depending on the way you have it set okay did you get the ball to bounce maybe kinda looks like we already have a game going on don't we okay the game is when will the ball actually hit the corner when can the ball actually hit the corner? I remember I had a uh, 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 didn't do it. I actually remember having a DVD player that anytime it went into sleep mode, um, it basically had it said DVD player, and it would have it would basically do this. <laughs> and sometimes you would sit there going, I wonder when it's going to hit the corner. I wonder when it's going to hit the corner. All right, so we technically have a game. It's a visual game. But we want to have more interactivity than that don't we okay so let's scroll down let's do our paddle okay now you can do this with the keyboard if you want to but we're actually going to do it with our mouse so we want to add the paddle sprite is what we want to do so let's go and let's make a new sprite and if we scroll down or add a new sprite I should say and again feel free to make these anything 
probably the first time making some of these games or if you do use any of the tutorials online um, probably best to, to follow it to begin with there's our paddle there's our paddle and we got to move our paddle to here don't we okay Whoop. We put him right at the middle and we wanted to do wanted to do a forever so let's add a forever uh, I have to um, uh, when the green flag is start okay when the green flag is clicked we want a forever okay and then we want it to be set X to mouse X okay now X is our left and right axis okay if we want it to be up and down we would say Y so set X to mouse X so where's our motion set X there's set there's set Y set X to we're gonna drag that there and what we want to do is we want to add where's our control here so under sensing okay under sensing now remember this is a bubble or circle or a, a circle blanking on the name for some reason but a long circle <laughs> shout it out if you know the name of what a long circle is okay I'll think about it in just a second all right so where it says mouse X drag and put that in there now like I said you could code this so you're using the keyboard arrows if you wanted to but I think our mouse will do well once you get that green forever make sure you're on the pat the paddle coding this by the way set x to mouse x which means it's going to move left and right not up and down or any other direction hit the green flag and then boom look it looks like our game oh it, uh, oh it doesn't do anything does it so it's not we haven't programmed the bouncing yet but look we actually have something going on yay okay so let's hit the X and did you notice that this stopped as well okay so let's minimize this let's go into our uh, set what happens when the ball meets the paddle okay so let's go ahead and we need to click the 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 ball is what we actually need to click okay now this seems a little bit trickier there isn't one that just says bounce. The big thing is we actually want the ball to bounce off at a certain angle, don't we? Okay. We want it to bounce off a certain angle, so here's the code we're going to do. Uh, we also need to click the ball to make this happen so let's go and click the ball okay so let's do wait hang on let me make sure I'm saying that right yeah touching paddle okay so yeah so that's right okay so we got to have this with the ball so let's click our add a green flag be our next code next to that we want to add a forever forever ever ever forever we want to add a if then if then all right if then go away thank you if then we want to add a touching which is under sensing touching we want to make sure it says paddle okay so sensing touching let's see where is it mm -hmm. 
Okay. No, that's color. Hold on. Yeah, touching paddle. Okay. I don't see a drop down. Oh, okay. Duh on my part. So here we go right here. So you see this where it says touching. Remember, this is a drop down. And there's paddle right there. So let's do touching. And we should be able to drag it in the long hexagon there. And then put puts it right there. Okay. And remember, the drop down first says mouse pointer. But we want to change it to paddle. So if touching paddle then and it's thinking about what should I do next then we want it to turn 180 degrees meaning we want it to look like it's doing a bounce okay so let's go to motion turn 180 degrees all right and we want it to move 15 steps okay this is a big one so it makes it looks like it's bouncing off and wait half a second okay if you don't do this part just right it won't really look like it's bouncing um, or animated properly so we need whoop, we need uh, move 15 steps and then we want to add a weight And it half a second, what is it? Ah, oh, half a second. Okay. Now, we've got all that. Let's go ahead and hit the green flag. See what happens. Boing. Boing. <laughs> Okay, so it's not perfect, but it could be could be a little better. The angle I have it right now is kind of stuck in that. Let's see. Feels like it's stuck. Oh, I got the corner. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead to our next part. Let's talk about adding. Uh, we're going to add our red line. So the game will be over okay so let's go ahead and do that so this is our adding array line so we're going to click add go to sprites and these are things that you could draw but I'm just using it the ones that are pre-made Said line. I'm actually going to drag the line below the paddle. See, perfect right there. Now let's do the 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 part for that. When it's clicked, when clicked, we need the forever. Forever, ever, ever, and ever. A forever. Now we need to if then. So if then, okay. And what do we need? We need a sensing, which is touching ball. Sensing touching and we can do the drop down to say ball so we we'll put it right there okay if touching ball then say game over okay It's going to say game over. Now, the important part is we need to make sure everything stops. 
right now, if we actually do not do the all stop, it'll hit that and just say game over. <laughs> That's all it's gonna do, okay? So it'll actually hit the red, say game over, and then nothing happens, okay? So we need to make sure we add an all stop. Go to control, we do stop all. Okay, now let's try our game. And if I miss, it hits there and I'll stop, okay? Well, I don't see where it says the game over. Ah, our code a little bit will have to be, we have to get the ball out of there, aren't we? Okay, maybe there's something wrong with our game. We need to make sure the ball starts in the middle, don't we? Okay. So let's click the ball. And I'm going to show you the easiest way to do this. Click our ball. Get the ball where you want it to be. Now when we do the... Let's see here. When we do... We have anything that deals with motion. Over here on the left you'll see the, the axes, the X and the Y. Now you don't have, you just need to be aware of how that works, okay? But if I move the ball, you'll actually see the numbers over here will actually change. Do you see that? Automatically. So I don't have to be absolutely precise on any of this. So if I click here, now we actually want it to be when the click the, when I click the green flag, we'll go back to our um, motion and I got the ball where I want it to be. Okay, I don't have to worry about the axes and all that because it's where the ball is now. Then, and I want to make sure that's the right one. It says go, yeah, go to, go to minus x, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but when I put it there. So when the ball touches here, everything will stop. It says game over. And when I hit the flag again, it's actually going to restart our flag, our ball back right there in the middle. Okay, so here we go. Whoop, there we go. <laughs> and if it hits the red, <laughs> why doesn't it say game over? Huh. Oh, okay. <sighs> because the line, the line is saying game over. I bet I just can't see it. So this actually may need to be a different place. That may need to be on the ball. Or that could be on the background. Let me, let me try that real quick. I think I could copy the whole thing. Okay, now if I delete the whole thing, I have it on the backdrop. Now, Oh, wait, did I delete the wrong thing? Oh, shoot. Yeah, so this has to be here because that's when it's touching the on my part because then that's always touching the thing. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh. All right, so it should work now. I have to figure out the, uh, why isn't it, uh, see, I don't see the, I don't see it on the screen, the game over, but you maybe you know it's game over. Hmm, I have to think about that. Okay, so 
So everything is troubleshooting, trust me. Everything is troubleshooting. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add the Apple Sprite. And the goal with the Apple Sprite is it's actually going to say that you win. Okay, so let's add a new Sprite. And it's going to be Apple. So click Apple. So we're going to put an Apple way here at the top. And like I said before, you could actually make these smaller. If you go to size and maybe make this like, um, you know, 50% or something, and all the little pieces 50%, it allow you to have more blocks on the screen at the same time, give it, give it more of a challenge. But this is okay for our example. So when clicked, forever. All right, so when clicked, and we need a forever. We need if, then, if then, touching ball. So we need sensing. So sensing, touching, change it to ball. Drag that in the middle there. Say you win for two seconds, okay? So drag this here, and we'll say you win. For two seconds. Now, what's the rest of it? Stop all. So you won the game, okay? Or maybe you could even mix this with the other one where you're doing score instead of just hitting the apple. It's how many times you can hit the apple and then make the, the blocks reappear again. You could remix this in a fun way. So we actually want it to be stop all, okay? So here's our code. Start the green flag, forever, if, then, stop, okay? Maybe you can just make it hide because we're gonna make the other parts hide. So let's go ahead and try it, whoop, sorry. Go ahead and try it. So if I hit green flag, boing. Oh, it got near there, didn't it? <laughs> I don't wouldn't say that that touched it, but it does. It does say that, doesn't it? Maybe it's like it kind of went by it just a little bit. Yeah, see, that didn't do it that time. Let's see. Oop. And nope. We're so close. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, it's stuck. It is kind of stuck, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so we can see that uh, we have to get it and control it just a little bit. There you go. But usually I get it right up in here and it says uh, you win a little bit more blatant. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add our three blocks, okay? And our first block, so we need to do Sprite. And it's just called Button, okay. Get our button, we're gonna put one button here. Or should I do it on the left side? I'll put it here for now. And then we'll do our other buttons, okay. And go ahead and add two more. No 
Okay, now, we won't talk about cloning right now, but there are other ways to do this. All right, so on the first block, uh, the first block we want to add, when the green ball is clicked, forever, if the ball touches the ball, okay, this is the forever part. I didn't mention that earlier. This is, it may say for like millisecond, hey, is it touching the ball? No, and then it turns off, unless you add a forever in there where it's all the time checking to make sure the ball isn't touching the block, okay? So let's add a, a forever. Let's click our first block. Let's say when the green flag is clicked, forever. We need to add an if then. Okay. And then we want to add the sensing touching what? Is it touching the ball? Yes, touching the ball. Then we want it to hide. Okay. Now, another thing you can do is I've played games like this and they actually have it set so sometimes you have to hit one block more than once so you could actually set that up all right and then we basically want it to do the same thing with the other ones so let's copy our code I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna actually do control C I can't do it up here can I let's see on our keyboard, let's uh, tap our code, do control C, okay, to copy, click our other block, do control V to paste. Oh, it didn't copy the top part. Oh, well, I'll just do that by hand. And the last one, control V, and then drag that one over there too. Okay, and we have an extra thing. Uh, the big thing is we want it to uh, reappear, don't we? When our flag is uh, when our flag is clicked again, so our game starts over. Remember, every action we do, we have to have an undo action. Okay, so when I click the flag, we want it to do show. We need to add that to all three of those. So when I do the flag. Do show. And I'm going to copy that. Control C, Control V, Control V, and there we go. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay. Works pretty good, doesn't it? But the ball doesn't stop. And one thing, this is what I've had before, I think it's about to do it. It will actually just, if you get the right angle, it just kind of creams through all those blocks. So we don't want that. We want it to have a little bit of pushback. So we actually want to make the ball bounce when it actually hits the block, okay? And that's this code here. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's click our first block and when the green flag is clicked, we want a forever, just so that it's checking all the time, a forever, uh, if then, okay, wait, I can't add that to another code, can I? No, I can't, because that because the it's the blocks code. All right, turn 180 degrees. Okay, so touching. So we need to do the sensing. Forever, go to sensing. And this time we want it to be the ball. Hold on, let me make sure I'm putting this in the right place. Oh, 
Yeah, add the bounce block code for the ball in each thing. Okay. So this actually has to go uh, with the ball. Okay. Um, the biggest recommendation is probably do the saving. Um, if you do have the account, then you can do do the saving part. If not, you'll, you'll you will have to start over. Sorry. Let's see. But it's all in the handout. I can tell you that. It is all in the handout. As you see, I'm just kind of following along with the handout. Okay, so. And of course, this video will be posted later, so you can rewind and uh, watch it again, too, if that's helpful. Okay, so. Let's go. I'm in the right place. We need our button. We need our forever. We need our if touching button to then turn 100 degrees. I'm, I'm feeling like that should be in the, the ball. Yeah, that should be in the ball. Okay. Yeah, add bouncing code to the ball. Duh. Okay, so this is not a block code. This is the ball code, but I have to do it. I have to add that code to, for each individual block. All right, so when the start click, we do forever. We have an if then. And I'm just gonna do the copy, the, the duplicate to make this part faster. If then, and we go to sensing, we gotta change it to make sure I'm doing the in order. So we'll just go by number, button three. So if then, and then I want it to turn 180 degrees. Okay. Now I'm actually gonna click here and I'm tell it to duplicate. And then I'm gonna change this to button four, I mean two, excuse me. And I right click again and say duplicate. And then boom, I'm gonna change this to button four. Okay, now let's go ahead and see it full screen. And hit the flag, boom, boing. And we could add sound effects to this, of course. Boing, boing. <laughs> Let me see if I can just get it a little closer. Up, oh, game over. Let's see, boing. And again, if you made these blocks smaller, you could have more of them on the same screen. And of course, add music and stuff would be good too. Remember, you're gonna upload MP3s and uh, WAV files as well. Oh, come on! I wanted to. If you win, if I can get it up there, I'm just not getting. I'm getting it not not perfect here. Need to be a little sharper. Come on. Nope. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so like I said, you could make these smaller. You could change the rules. You could even make it so that the ball um, are points that you're trying to get to. So there could be things that you could skip over, uh, which would be pretty interesting. All right. So let's look at our handout here, and I'm actually going to call this the ball bounce. 
and hit save, file, save. All right, so let's see. I think I might mess with that one little bit. You know, if I did the ball and instead of 120, if I change, let's see, where's the actual bounce is what I want. When the ball hits the paddle, if I made that 120, what would that be like? No, no, oh, okay, so just a few degrees and the ball acts completely different. I think 180 is probably still the best. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. So, did you get it? <laughs> Hopefully, you did. If not, at least I got you started. So, let's go ahead and let's play with our next one here. And we're getting close to the end of class, so one of the things we'll do is I'll pull this one up so we can kind of talk about it, and I'll get to show you. It actually has a pre-made um, layout. So it actually has uh, our pro main project is here. And if we go to our handout, so it's a boat game. So you're actually controlling the boat with your mouse. These will actually give you speed up. Okay. This is turning, and your goal is to try to get to the sandbar. Okay. Now, a little bit, I'll play with that one some. And uh, a little bit of extra here. We've got the Donkey Kong like one that you can try at home this from the raspberry pi one like i said the coding just takes too long on this one to be able to to use it in class um, because usually we would try this and then we wouldn't get to the end of it but it's a great little thing you get here and it actually uh, we learn about gravity how to set gravity for our characters how to also create clones for it and also to make it um, the go when it touches a color which direction it can move in and that's the um, hand. That's the the um, address for that. Excuse me. And then we also have our it talks about our sprite movement, and I have details about that in the in the handout there. And also it's on the website. And to kind of finish up this part, and I'm going to go back and uh, talk more about the little boat game. We've got some resources here. Uh, how to even start making a Mario game, some videos, the best five scratch games, which I showed yesterday, and then Code Academy if you want to go more into coding. Okay, now let me go back to our handout. So it kind of pops up like this, and it actually has some resources. So I'm going to go there. So I actually click there. And it's a starter. The biggest reason to why to have for this to have a starter is because it has the animation, okay. And then it goes this way. Oh, Mac, that's a good question. 
Um, uh, Scratch 2 is older, so we the main thing is our, our focus should be on Scratch 3. Okay, so kind of talk about our little boat here for a little bit, and I kind of flip back and forth. So we can kind of play around with this uh, slightly here. So one of the things is to control our boat, and there he goes right there. <laughs> it's kind of neat. So to control our boat, let's add a click with the green flag. We're going to point direction zero. That's just so that it's pointing the right way to begin with. Okay, so let's add our flag. And like I said, the only thing that really comes with this is that uh, the boat can get a uh, drawing like this and then they can actually draw uh, to break it up as well. And then, of course, it comes with its own drawn background. Now, the neat part about this is you can actually go in and edit this because it's based on the color. So when you hit brown is bad, and when you hit the yellow, sand is good. Okay. Oh, I can't do certificates, um, Miss Jan, right now. If we were actually in class, we could do a certificate and print it out and hand it out. But you can, act, you can say that you have attended this class, though. But if we were in a live class, on ground class, I'd print one out for you. Okay, so we do point direction. There's point direction, zero. And it gives us a little bit of thing here. That's mostly so our boat's pointing up when we start. So if we click the flag, it should turn him. Boom, now he's pointed up. And then we have our going to X uh, minus nine. And I believe that's just this area. Yeah, so basically it's exactly where it is. Yeah, it's go to, where is it on here? There it is, go to, and it's 190, 150. It's basically just to make sure that when you click the flag, the boat starts where it's supposed to. We need a forever, so let's add a forever. Oh, thank you for coming so much. Um, like I said, there's lots of little projects. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be doing at 2.30 our Op our box opening with our Raspberry Pi um, class, and I'm play. I'll, I'll finish playing with this in a few minutes, but I just I'll just show you this real quick. But we'll be doing a box opening. Yay! Have to find out what's in the box. What's in the box? Okay, and also we'll be opening this box too. And it's got all kinds of little neat gadgets in there for our Raspberry Pi projects to talk about. They kind of get you started. Like I said, this is the an on ground class that I do, but of course we're doing everything virtual right now, kind of staying safe. So this is kind of the way we, we talk about this stuff and I'll get to show it a little bit too. But that's Thursday and next month, uh, it's next week I believe we have it scheduled. Uh, tomorrow we'll come out with the full schedule of everything we're gonna be doing next month. And we also are including a scratch to Python class. Um, so definitely come for that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <sighs> Please, or at least, uh, you know, send them my way. So, uh, work. Our classes aren't going anyway, um, away any anytime soon or anything. Of course, we're at home, staying safe and everything. 
And then, of course, when we're back, um, you know, in person teaching stuff in the future, we're going to be very positive. We'll be doing that again, too. So, so yeah. So, um, so yeah. Uh, let me check my time here. Okay. So, we've got about five minutes left. Uh, let me show you the little boat moving around. The funny thing about the boat is the way it, it operates. And I can actually go back to our main thing here and show it to you. It's very easy and making your own maps is very easy on here too because it's dealing with the colors. So you could actually click new new backdrop and as long as you're using the, the same brown color and the same, um, you know, the yellow color, you can actually make any puzzle or, you know, maze that you wanted to with the little boat. And if I accidentally touch the sides, oh, it crashes, oh no. So it's a very easy game to change and to challenge other people to play. And it's not the it's not super easy or anything. And it's just kind of neat to play around with a good game to, to get started with and everything. So yeah. Oh, if I hit the, uh, the the little arrows, it kind of speeds it up too. Oh no, I hit the corner. Oh no. But if you hit the, the yellow sand, that means you won. So it's actually a game based on whatever the color is. Uh, so you don't have to really do any master coding or anything like that. Just kind of follow along with, uh, you know, what it says. And they even talk about adding a timer to it and all kinds of drawing where he runs into the sides there, controlling our boat and stuff. So, yeah, it, it's a fun one uh, to do. And like I said, if you want to make changes to it, uh, make another level, um, it's quite easy to do. Okay. All right. So we've kind of come to the end of our class. I hope everybody um, enjoyed it. I did. Thank y'all for coming so much. And I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to be doing the Google search and internet safety basics. It'll be posted here on the YouTube channel. And it also will um, be uh, posted on the, this is presented by the, the Grove, Grove Town Library. So um, you can actually view that link on the, their Facebook as well. I'll post there. And then tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be doing our introduction to Raspberry Pi computing project ideas. I'll be doing some physical uh, computing, making some LEDs light up and stuff. And we'll do a little bit of basic Python coding to make our LED blink and stuff. And like I said, next month, we're going to be doing a class called Scratch to Python. And it's going to be for people that love Scratch, want to learn Python coding. And I've got a website we're going to use that'll uh, make Python uh, easier to use. It has blocks like Scratch, but then we also, and it puts the code in, and we click a button, then we can see the real code. So join me for that. These are some of the other classes that uh, I've taught this month. Uh, most of these classes are still available on each library's website uh, Facebook page so, so those videos are still up like I said tomorrow we'll put out our full new schedule just a reminder our libraries are open with limited services and hours uh, all our classes in you know in in person stuff is uh, d being done virtually uh, curbside holds pickup is available and you can go up to gchrl.org for details you can call the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please don't forget to like our Facebook pages um, and also like in our videos and my videos and like and subscribe, all our kind of that kind of good stuff too. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. And I'm very glad that you came today and I hope you had a good time. So any final questions? Still messing with the, the green screen thing and trying to figure that out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, there we go. It took the edge off. 
<laughs> that was up here in this area. All right. Well, thank you for coming, everyone. Have a great day. Hopefully, I'll see y'all tomorrow or next month. So have a great, great Wednesday. Bye-bye. <laughs>